Welcome everybody to episode two of Kick and Brass Podcast. I am Byron Vaughn, your host. With me today are my co-host Johnny Phoenix and Joe Escobar from JustPewReviews.com. Our spotlight guest today is Team Troy three-gun shooter Ursula Williams. Here is some video from Ursula. Ursula, welcome in. Thanks for coming. Welcome, Thanks for welcome. having me. I feel nice super honored to be here. This is awesome. It's almost <laughs> like deja vu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Since you've been here before. I know. A <laughs> couple times, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your shooting career, Ursula. So I started shooting competitively about four and a half years ago. I was doing local pistol matches here at Phoenix Ronic Gun Club. And uh, one of the board members who actually put on a lot of the pistol matches I was shooting um, came up to me one day he's all like yo you need to do three gun and at the time i just knew three gun was super expensive so i was like i don't need to do anything but pay taxes and die like straight up like i don't need to do anything else he's like no no, no but you'd be really good at it like completely hyped me up and uh so i still told him no but uh <laughs> so during that time i was like uh ah, let me just find something so i found a woman's match in new mexico that was a couple months out and uh i reached out to him and i was like hey you know what i found this match and I told him what it was, and uh, he's like, well, why you pick New Mexico? I was like, uh, I don't know anybody, so if I messed <laughs> up, you know, he'll be... Nobody will know. <laughs> nobody will know, <laughs> so it's okay. Well, nobody so, you know. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's fine. So uh, he uh, found out what gear I was running, and then he actually ended up loaning me a shotgun for this match. Got me squared away for it, and I ended up finishing second in my first division. Or wow. first, wow. second wow. in my first match in my division. So from that day, I was pretty much hooked like completely hooked to the whole thing. We'll never go so. to shooting. Yeah. <laughs> that confirms no, it. No, not one bit. Nope. Yeah. Done. Nope. Save us the embarrassment. <laughs> so what? So now, now you're uh, international, right? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Um. So last year I went to France. I'm on the USPSA national shotgun team, and uh, so the shotgun world shoot or any of the world shoots you may hear, um, those are all like the Olympics of practical shooting. Right. So um, last year was France. This year was actually the rifle world shoot in Sweden, mm -hmm. which I was unable to attend uh, due to like just my shoot schedule. Right. Um, next year is going to be pistol. <clears throat> and the following year is going to be shotgun again, which I'm already slotted to go because last year in a, uh, my team, we actually ended up finishing third. So we pulled nice. him. Whoa, okay. And uh, we, it was funny because with how much training and how much stuff we put into it, we, we didn't even cared about placing. Right. We just, all three of us just cared about finishing. Right. So uh, we're at the award ceremony and it was a, like super red carpet event. Like all the competitors got treated like superstars. And um, I'm sitting there having drinks with France and they have like beer and wine on tap and <laughs> cheese and baguettes and all this stuff. Right. And uh, another teammate, another USA teammate that shot on another team, uh, division team, she came up to our table. She's like, hey, hey, don't get too drunk because uh, y'all podiumed. We're like, well, wait, what? <laughs> like total instant sober. We're like, oh, man. So I'm like pushing water because I'm wearing five inch stilettos, cute little black dress. And I'm like, I don't want to look like a brand new baby giraffe <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to cross the, 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 uh, the stage to get to the podium. So um, that was a super awesome experience. And so th that's kind of cool that they, they, they treat the shooting sport in, in a whole different light than I would think, mm -hmm. you know, because here in the U.S. it's kind of a small deal. You know, it's a very, very uh, specific, mm -hmm. very small uh, community. Com compar yeah, right. compar compar to all the gun owners. Right. So yeah, what's, it, what's the vibe like in Europe and just gun ownership in general? What's um, it like to be a woman to, 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 to shoot? There's you know? a lot of people, a lot of different countries. They're completely envious of our freedoms here. They're like, oh my God, you can have all the guns you want and you don't wow, really have yeah. to give it. That's a natural right. right. Like they're still trying to wrap that concept around it. Yeah, you have the right to protect yourself in America. Wow. <laughs> but uh, in your country or wherever country <laughs> that is, yeah, they don't yeah. have that. So, so how do you feel when you're over there and you don't get to carry? You know what? I'm okay with that. Maybe because with my skill set and also... Um, 
teaching CCW here in Arizona that a firearm, there's just one tool. There's multiple tools that you can use. So like there's knives, batons, um, baseball bats. There's so much stuff that you can use that are not your traditional weapons, but you can use those. Um, was it but, weird taking all your guns to like another country? You know what? It was slightly nerve wracking. The first time you're like, Ugh. yeah. The first time I was just like, there. You know, of course there were other shooters that have been internationally, and they're like, hey, you need a customs form, you need an invitation. That's going to count as your gun permit while you're there. And I'm like, that's really not bad. It was actually pretty simple. The whole entire process. Checking in or checking out? Both, actually. Both? Yeah. So. You got me tripping on the last part where you said there's like other stuff being. Because I do a lot of articles on my blog, mm -hmm. TAC blog, by the way. A little <laughs> plug in for the. Hey, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> um, th there are a lot of other. You know, this, I didn't tell the guys that we were going to do this, but uh, I, I always wanted to do this with guests. So we need to see a pocket dump from you. All right. Let's see those Since pockets. Let's, let's, <laughs> you're going to use some other stuff. Let's see what you're using. Pull it out. Well, because it's, it's Phoenix. I'm, of course, I'm carrying it. So um, I'm running it right now because it's summertime. This is my summer carry, uh, which is a Glock 42. Um, all the work done on it was by We Plead a Second, including my holster. Um, the trigger that's in it is actually Overwatch. Underrated and, trigger. Huh? Underrated trigger. Dude, it is freaking amazing. It's awesome, Like yeah. super crisp, like every single time. And from mm -hmm. running flat face triggers on pistols, <clears throat> I do it now on, on rifles. And like I notice I'm a hell of a lot faster on rifles. Um, because of going to a flat face, but the Overwatch one is super crisp and um, kind of probably one of the more crisper ones on the market. Yeah, Ooh. my favorite. So it's actually one of my favorites. So have that. I would have thought you'd been a, at least a nine millimeter carry. You know what? Um, nobody wants to get shot in the face with anything. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's <laughs> even even twenty twos. You know when you can PB put guns. a bullet pretty much anywhere you right, want to. Right. Right. Yeah. A twenty two is gonna work. Twenty two is gonna work. I don't need that 454. But I just, yeah. Thanks. I, oh, I just need them to, I just want to change a behavior. Right. So you get shot in the face with anything. That's what, you know, that's <laughs> you a, know? funny that you say that because I was saying that on one of my articles and I was saying that, uh, you know, self-defense isn't about, you're not going to combat, right? You're trying mm -hmm. to distract or dissuade. So if you can't do either one to, to get out of the situation. Right. You know. I mean, it's, it's still, uh, it's still self-defense. So right. like, um, you still have to be mentally, mentally prepared to take a life. Right. So that's, it is a kind of a form of combat. I see it more as competition because life is a competition. Right. But if you decide to cross that line to where you're going to put me in a position to use, you know, self-defense. We're not going to for me to defend myself. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. I, <laughs> you know, like then. We're good. <laughs> what else do you got in your pockets? Right. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next item. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> next item. Um, so car keys and uh, total shout out to Sog. I love their little house key knife. This is so cool. That's and, right, uh, folks. I did a review on that. And I think <laughs> I think they're TSA compliant because TSA is not taking this from me, and I fly with it all the time. So I just think yeah. it's a key. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> TSA will not be watching this show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Spiderco Persistence <clears throat> knife, um, pretty solid, solid little EDC knife. Um, actually, relatively sharp. Uh, what else got here? I have my uh, Streamlight Micro Stream flashlight. It's about the same size as, as Chapstick, so right. there should be no reason why somebody cannot carry a flashlight. Have you ever had to use it? You know, in a movie theaters. Okay. So if I drop something, it's ready. Available. How about your blade? Do you ever have to pull your blade it other than just uh, just <laughs> cutting boxes and stuff? Yeah, <laughs> cutting boxes. But I, cutting if I boxes. if I need, and the yeah. thing is, like, not every self defense situation is going to be a shoot scenario. Right, right. right. You know, if you're at a gas station or you know things like that where you actually buy the pumps. Right. You know what? Probably not going to shoot somebody, especially if I'm, you know, filling up my car. So I'm going to actually use some other form of uh, another gotcha. weapon, knives. Perfect. Light and knife combo. Yeah. <laughs> I can. <laughs> and also depends on what my assailant has brought to the, to the fight too. Um, cell phone. First, let's ready for this stuff, guys. Yeah. Have to be. One thing that a lot of people don't think about that I love that I have is a U.S. Law Shield, which is uh, self defense insurance, and. Because, like, we have cell phone insurance, we have car insurance, we have home insurance. I'm pretty sure nothing's really going to happen to everything else, but my chances of actually using, you know, or being in a situation where I'm going to have to defend myself, that is more likely to happen than everything else I just listed. So being able to protect myself um, legally, that is, That's that underrated. is totally That's worth way it. underrated. The best thing mm -hmm. to have in your yeah. wallet right it's now. It's absolutely the best thing to have in my wallet. Um, for, like, I think it's like 11 bucks a month. And I have a limited coverage. 
I have access to an attorney 24 seven. Even if, if it's one of those questions like, yo, I'm going to Alaska next month. Right. Um, what can I do? Like, do they even recognize Arizona CCWs? Right. You know, they actually do a lot of the legwork for you because ignorance is not a defense when it comes down to you going to other states. Absolutely. So I rather make sure and being able to have a phone number that's in my wallet. It's like know? the triple A of. Uh, yeah, it of, is totally the triple yeah. A of like self-defense. Right. Um, there are other companies out there, but U.S. Law Shield, a couple reasons why I like them, not only of their coverage, but their involvement into the community. Like they actually hold like stop the bleed classes, um, informational courses, um, other medical stuff. So you shop. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. You shopped a yeah. few other services before mm-hmm. this one. Yep. Okay. And this right here for basically the price of like two coffees a month. You, you pretty much, I have that peace of mind where it's like, okay, cool. If I go to Starbucks and get into something, I know as long as I'm not the aggressor, I'm covered. Yeah. Right. But plus for over like a little over 20 bucks a month, you can do a whole family, mm-hmm. a whole family insurance. You guys, you have one of those, don't you, Brian? I do. I do. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. My whole, my whole household is. It's covered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A twenty-four hour lawyer. You just gotta give them a call. Numbers on the back. Yep. That's pretty crazy. It's, honestly, out of everything in my EDC, that's probably like the most important thing that I have, because they will cover me with every single any legal weapon that I use. So Arizona just legalized nunchucks. I don't have any yet, but I kind of want some <laughs> just because I'm like. Why, why did you Why did you look at me when you said yeah. that? <laughs> You're just in my line yeah. of sight. I was waiting for her to pull some out of the back pocket. Right, like, hey, I got these yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that's a, that's a nice rounded little EDC kit you have there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Other than get, you know, I'll have to say I'm a little surprised you got a 380. Other than that, it is for I look at it this way. So if we were in like a different climate, yeah, I, where I can conceal it a lot better. Right. I would totally run like a 19, a 40, or even the um, 43x, or right. even a 48. Um, mainly because of I can wear it bulkier clothing and conceal it much easier than I would. Is there it's Phoenix. It was like keep, 90, what 90 something today yep. in October. I, I you know I tell people that all the time on my blog. It's like man, it's Phoenix. Yeah, you know, I don't carry a bunch of crazy stuff Mm -hmm. because it's it's flip-flop weather yep you know and that's what we have to do so it's like flip-flop weather like almost all the time yeah it is what what ammo are you running through as your defense rounds what are you um actually i was looking at different ballistics when it came down to 380 self-defense stuff and ball and they're roughly the same for 380 so i just carry ball in there and plus also shoot um shoot a lot so I also shoot a lot of my EDC stuff, so I get a lot of practice in with that. So ball just fine. So that's pretty interesting. Just straight ball ammo. Yeah, for 380. Yeah. So because Shop ballistically they look about the same. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of practice, for a uh, competitive shooter, what's mm-hmm. what's a practice schedule roughly like? And um, for this last match uh, that I shot in Kentucky. Um, it, was, it was a women's match, and it was pretty much the who's who of the women's like shoot community. It was, it was pretty big. There was a lot of the top female shooters there. So for that right there, I was practicing like every day. I was either doing dry fire, or live fire. Um, all the guys at Ben Avery know me on a first name basis. Like, <laughs> how, many like, ra- oh, how many rounds do you go through? Oh, oh man, when you're competing. Mm, I was looking asked at me about that. probably about a. Almost a case of everything. Holy moly! So you, any, any chance you get your practice in pajama, mag reloads? Oh yeah, there are some. <laughs> yeah, there are some nights if I can't sleep, man, I'm like in my pajamas in the like, hallway going. <laughs> <laughs> I think I posted on Instagram one day. Like I think it was like an old picture of Winnie the Pooh and a shotgun late at night in his pajamas, and I'm like, that's what I look like in the middle of the night. So it would be fair to say that you run through about three thousand rounds a week. I wish that was probably more like a month. A month, okay. Roughly. If I'm like in heavy training right. mode, now for um, for people who aren't familiar, um, the video that we played earlier with uh, when you mm-hmm. were inside with the shotgun practicing yes. loading that is dry firing. That's called dry firing. Yes. yes. So uh, that was me using dummy shells or complete inert rounds. Um, those are actually some Brownells I picked up like three years ago, and they're still going strong. Have not had any problems with them, and those are like using dummy rounds are like some of the best training tools in conjunction with video so you got to video yourself and actually see what you're doing wrong and you can actually compare that you can compare it with you know old videos of yourself or you know shooters that you know you're really cool with and you have similar mm-hmm. shoot styles and that's one thing that um, a lot of the shooters do 
is video ourselves dry firing or live firing and actually waiting for that feedback. Study yourself, basically. Yeah, totally study yourself and see where you can, where you can cut down on wasted time. Because when it comes down to competition, all of, every single round or excuse me, every single second that you waste, they add up. And that will seriously set you apart between you know one of the top shooters, you being maybe second, third, you know place shooter. So it depends on how do you cut that time. So being a little bit more efficient in your movements and stuff. How much do you think your competition training translates to everyday carry? Easy, um, a lot because like I get to manip- manipulate my gun under super stressful conditions because that's what competition really is. Right. Is that for? A match director to actually recreate or even make a stressful condition and expect you to perform. Same thing with if you have to be in a self defense situation. Right. That's going to be a stressful situation. However, if you already know how to manipulate your gun, how to shoot, put down effective shots, in an, in a stressful situation, you're going to be just fine in in EDC or in everyday carry or. Have you, you taken know. carbine or or uh, or other? Com- Courses, yeah, yes. combat courses. I have. How do how do those that that's what interests me the most? Yeah, I don't compete, but mm-hmm. I've taken some courses in the past. How does that c- compare um, to a, a combat class, for example? So um, when it comes down to being a little more tactical, you're looking for you know more cover and concealment, whereas competition is a little more speed based. But a lot of the weapon manipulation actually um, they're the same. So not just weapon manipulation, but also target acquisition. Being able to look at your target and also pick up your sights really fast, right? Because it's something you have to do in competition, and the longer you do it, like it's like second nature, right? Uh, gun manipulation, second nature. Um, being able to spot your target, actually mill it, or kind of guess how far away it is, and then actually put. So rounds there's on obviously it. some yeah. overlay, right? Mm-hmm. How about if, if you're if you're a, a a woman or a man, just somebody who's just getting into shooting? What would you recommend with your history? of being a competitive shooter, what would you recommend that they would be, where would they start to get to so, where you are? <laughs> well, where did it takes you a lot start? of work. Where yeah. did you start? I started I mean, with pencil competitions. Before yeah. that, before. Just like steel did challenge or? Uh, yeah, these are yeah. like Thursday night still at Phoenix Runner Gun Club. That is pretty much, that got me a lot of uh, holster practice, a lot of mag exchanges, uh, shooting and moving, things like that. And it's a controlled environment. So, um, being goal oriented helps a lot too, and that's mm-hmm. one thing I do a lot. Where I'm like, you know what? I just want to. When I first started, I was like, I just want to beat myself, or the next match, uh, I just want to beat one other person. But right. I need to put that work in. So, but that's a definitely a good start. Is basically your local pistol competition because most people have a pistol. Right. Um, a lot of those pistol matches, they'll start holding like or putting on uh, rifle matches, like the exact same stages, but with paper targets and do rifle with it, carbine with it. And you're like, oh my god, this is cool. And then it's like basically in the matrix, with you know, blue pill, red pill. <laughs> right. Next, you know, you take the red pill, and you down the hole, the rabbit hole. So, but definitely. Question for you. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've always wondered this <clears throat> because I'm not the most sure-footed of people in the world. <clears throat> Excuse me, but three gun, you're running between targets. Mm-hmm. Um, aren't you ever afraid you're gonna trip? No. No. Have you, you tripped? tripped? <laughs> you know what? Have you tripped? Have you somebody fell? I have, had to have, I have not. Have, have you seen matches? somebody yes, just I, fight I, it? I've seen I have on seen. I have seen seen shooters fight it. Basically, as <clears> long as <throat> depending on what uh, platform you have in your hands, as long as you keep control of that gun, you're fine. You don't yeah. ND. You know you have perfect. You know trigger discipline, and you know trigger finger discipline. You're you're gonna be good because that that's something that could happen even in real life. Exactly. So you still need to be able to get up and still finish your stage, still finish that fight. So I have yet to uh, face went. I have fallen, <laughs> but I had basically main control of my pistol. Um, I've slipped a few times. You had an unexpected that mag could, drop. Huh? <laughs> unexpected oh, mag oh, drop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where I'm just like, oh, mag fell out. Okay, cool. I'm going to grab my other mag and keep on going. So that happens from time to time. Where, where, do you, where, do you, where do you think you can improve the most right now between the three disciplines? So I just switched platforms from um, going from uh, polymer frame. So I went basically from a Glock 34 to a STI to a mm-hmm. DVC-3, so a 2011. A and that right there. <laughs> you know what? I actually thought, I was like, man, I'm going from no safety, <laughs> no external safeties to external safety. So I actually thought there was going to be a lot of um, a lot of a learning curve, and it really wasn't. 
What about the weight on, on the firearms? Does that make a huge... It does. Um, it really does. So with follow-up shots, things like that, and, and actually having some muzzle rise, very minimum. So, but What's your full-size EDC? Full-size... Full size, uh, <laughs> full size would be 17. 17. 17. 17. Yeah. So you're a Glock fan. You know what? There's something that's completely accessible to everybody. Like a lot of the, you know, 2011s, like they're starting off at like three grand. That's not really right. accessible to a lot of people. However, Glocks are. So one reason why I love competing with Glocks is that if I can do great with a Glock, you can too. Right. If you're willing to put that work in, do it. Like you can, you can shoot whatever you want. So, um, but honestly, all of the stuff that I do would not be possible if it wasn't for my sponsors. Right. And sponsor, not just sponsors, but my own personal sponsors. And then there's also sponsors of the sport. Right. So a lot of these matches are put on because there's the industry behind it. Do you um, have other sponsors other than Troy? Yes. Look at her shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're looking <laughs> at her shirt. I'm not looking at her shirt. It's so, covered in. Yeah. So, uh, Troy is my main sponsor. Um, one thing I love, Mo Money Pond, M P Guns is actually one of my favorite sponsors as well. I'm not saying that because y'all right in front of me, but <laughs> like legit. so like I get to, I get to shoot as much as I do and practice as much as I do and um, get to the level that I'm at. If it wasn't for Mo Money being my my main ammo sponsor because that that's why we that's never like, get any ammo. <laughs> takes it all, all Mo. No, because like I have no reason to suck at this point. Like pretty much, I have my gear, I have my ammo. It's like. I run good stuff, so it's like I, I shouldn't suck, you know. Um, and I put that work in. I take it back. We should take or slow with us shooting because we need the ammo. <laughs> and the tra- and the training and, exactly. and the training. I do train. Um, I have Vortex Optics. We played the second. Henning Group, um, Lucas Oil, Elfman Triggers, Tough Products, uh, Draco's Barrels. Um, I feel like I'm missing. I think the shorter couple. question would have been, who doesn't sponsor you? Right. <laughs> But one thing I like about my sponsors is that I've actually uh, been running their gear before I was even sponsored by them. Okay. So that's um, letting kind of let them know, hey, look, like I'm still willing to buy your stuff. Like I bought your stuff and I run it and I trust it and I absolutely believe in it. And pretty much in return, they're like, well, you're legit. Here you go. How often you know? are you training? Man, right now I'm about to hit another. Uh, uh, international uh, match, so I'll be going to Greece in June. So I'll be back on every day, every day I touch my gun. So, and awesome. because I'm mission oriented <clears throat> in my um, in my bathroom, I actually have the master bedroom in my house. So on my mirror, I actually wrote, "What have you done today to prepare for a blank?" So every time, every morning, every time I get up, I question myself, like, "What did I do, or what am I going to do to prepare for whatever?" So. Right now, I have Greece in that blank spot. So, what am I doing to prepare for Greece? So what are you every doing day. to prepare for Greece? Uh, right now, <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm dry firing um, because I'm trying to find what uh, bird shot I'm gonna shoot over there. If mm-hmm. um, because their distributor's a little bit different, and I don't want to deal with customs to send like a flat of shells over there because oh. that's like a that's a total pain. So I'm like, you know what? Let me find what they have yeah. over there so I can get it here, so I can practice with it here, so I can buy it over there. That is a great point. A lot of people don't understand that guns um, pattern differently with different yep. ammo. So mm-hmm. you're carrying ammo, you have to you have to you have to make sure it hits where you're aiming. Yeah, uh, and it's different with different ammo. So, different yeah. ammo, different projectiles, different brass, different primers, different uh, powder. They all it's they're all different. It's like basically like if I go have like a brownie from you know Joe's you know grandma's house. And then go have a brownie that Byron made. They're gonna be two totally separate, different brownies. They're both gonna fill me up, and they're sugary and sweet, and I like brownies. But they still have two different recipes. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. So they're not gonna be the exact same. So being able, your guns are pretty much the same way. So you got to find out what ammo works best for your gun, what patterns the best, what groups the best, with you being an operator. And that translates from competition as well as to AD- EDC. EDC. Yep. People always sit there and they shoot practice ammo all the time mm-hmm. and that they shove their defense ammo into their gun and you're going to have a different point of impact yeah it's going to be totally different so that's why uh when i go over edc and stuff like that ammo wise i'm like get two boxes i know they're 20 round boxes i know they're like 30 bucks a pop however you need to be able to shoot this so you can feel the re- the recoil so you know how it's going to behave when you shoot it exactly exactly so, there's like, no surprise people all the time in here that they, they, they buy the 115 grain 
for uh, the target for nine mil, and yeah. then they, yeah. they buy like one forty seven grain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> those like, both of those gonna feel yeah. pretty different. So exactly. you, should know, you yep. definitely should know exactly. A gun's gonna com- completely yep. respond differently. What are you exactly. running for a shotgun? I'm running Benelli M two. Benelli M two and so and carbine. Carbine Troy's Troy's, Troy's Conqueror. Um, I've been running that same rifle for three years now, and now what one optic? Hiccup. Vortex. Vortex. Uh, but... I'm running their Viper PSC, their Gen two now. I had their Gen 1. Their Gen 1 was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Then the Gen 2, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that reticle. So uh, my only learning curve I had with that was the reticle in the Gen 2 is actually uh, full mils versus half mil in the old reticle. Me, I'm just thinking, oh, they're the same. No problem. I'm up here shooting 500 yards. And I'm like, why am I high? Like, what is going (laughs) on? Hmm. Why am I shooting right over this target at 500 yards? And then another shooter that ran the same scope that was on my squad, he's all like, uh, those are mil, uh, <laughs> those are full mil subtensions, not half. So I'm like, gotcha. I so hate make that sure problem re- when I'm off at 500. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, read your manual. Like, all right, cool. So I'm off what, at 100. What? So right. I'm <laughs> trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> Maybe you can help me. And by the way, uh, I've talked to Ursula about optics, and she's it's scary the amount of information you have. You know what? Because I, um, right shortly after I started three gun, I started doing precision rifle, and um, I just did it with a regular Remington 700, little SPS varmint, so I had a 26 inch, 26 inch barrel, 308, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, 308 is crazy!" I'm like, "Yeah, you'll learn a lot on 308, though. You absolutely learn a lot." So does your shoulder hate you? Huh? No. So <laughs> the, having a 26 inch barrel actually takes yeah, a lot of the recoil off bad. of it. It's not Real bad. Way it's not bad. No, but then, the, uh, the amount of practicing with the with the with the shotgun. I mean, I no. shot. I've shot those shotguns, and I mean, they're they're a little recoil, but it's still gonna get to you. No. No. Uh, you no. Know it's funny. Maybe the, it's just me being the weak. world shoot was actually 30 stages. We <laughs> shot maybe I would say close to 500, close to 500 bird, and another maybe. 50 slugs and some buck in that and I wasn't sore at all. So you will not be competing. No, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm still healing from the shotgun from about a month ago. <laughs> well, um, we have some uh, other uh, other stuff to cover here in the show. Um, Ursula, we did have one question from one of our, uh, our viewers that, her? what do you bring to a potluck? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it depends, because um, <laughs> I. When they asked that question, I was like, I had a no too, because you know what? Cause I saw the message I, too, and I I'm laughed like, hysterically oh, when yeah. I saw it. I was like, I gotta so, do this. <laughs> uh, because I'm vegan now, and I'm also cheap, so actually, watermelon can actually uh, <laughs> feed a lot of people for three dollars. So <laughs> I'm not cooking right nothing. Oh, that was as good as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Like, seriously, if you want to feed a lot of people for like three dollars, yeah. everybody's making it casseroles and <laughs> nope. Ursula gonna... brings in her watermelon. Yep. <laughs> that is what is up. All right. Well, <laughs> on to our spotlight review. Uh, our spotlight review this week is the uh, the brand new Springfield Armory Hellcat. And the question asked is: Is the new king of the micro compacts, Joe? To me, I think it is. Um, I really enjoyed shooting that gun, and I really think I'm going to buy me one. I don't know about you, Phoenix, if you enjoyed it as much as I did. But, I didn't uh, love it as much as Joe did, but it's a very, <laughs> very good gun. It's 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 got recoil. Every every gun its size is going to have recoil. Mm-hmm. Um, what I liked the most about it was the sights. Mm-hmm. Over and over, I just the sights were just... It's got. I don't know if you can see it from there, but yeah. it's got that U notch in the rear, and exactly. that front sight just pops. It's like a uh, trimium and fluorescent Mm -hmm. so like when the sunlight hit it it just it popped and i was just just focused right on it um the capacity i love the capacity on it too gun that's well p365 did it first with the micro compact of having that much capacity but the the hellcat actually just beat it by one round on each mag so Mm -hmm. so they're sitting at what 11 11 11 on the flush fit mag Uh and then you got 13 on the the little extended mag okay um the serrations on the top I, I, don't, I don't think you've ever seen that before in the rear that was cool um it also has it in the front it shot great it handled great uh what'd you think about it phoenix 
I think I was just overhyped about it. You know what I mean? Because oh, I was yeah. waiting so long to get my hands on to one, and I was like, man, I'm never going to get to shoot it because it's a popular gun. We're going to have a hard time getting a hold of one, and I wasn't just going to go and buy one just, just to shoot. So I think I just overhyped myself on the gun. Um, what I was looking for were some technical innovations um, that that wasn't there. It, it, it's, it's a great gun, mm-hmm. but it's nothing new. Right. right. There's no, it's not breaking ground on anything. So that that's the only disappointment to me. I mean, I don't, I don't want to sit there and badmouth the gun. There's nothing bad about it. It shoots well. It has really nice grips. Um, that extra little pinky thing. I don't even know what the word is. <laughs> the the yeah, the finger, the <laughs> pinky pinky thing. Yeah, it really does help on getting a hold of the gun. The P365 to me is a hard shooting gun. Mm-hmm. It has a lot of muzzle flip. It wants to jump out of your hand. And shooting the two side by side, I'd have to say the Springfield shoots better. It feels better to me personally. Mm-hmm. But I feel far, like it was like a, like a perfected 365. Is that, yeah, you, know, you could probably say that. I would say that you're right on the sights. You know, the, I don't know if that's a big uh, X dot or what is that? Is that proprietary? Excess sights, I think. Excess sights. Yeah. It, it really does pick up well in, in a lot easier in, uh, in low light even. You know, I just mm-hmm. try to mess around with it in low light. And it looks... Like it, it's very easy to acquire okay. as a as a, a you know, pick it opposed up. to a three sixty five. Well, with that, let's uh, go ahead and check out the video review. Yeah, check it out. This is Joe from Just a P Reviews. I'm out here with Johnny Phoenix. Uh, today we'll be testing the highly anticipated um, Hellcat from Springfield. We're gonna shoot this Hellcat. See uh, see how it performs. And lock back at the last round. That might be my error. Give it a few more tries. First run at the Springfield Hellcat. Jim said he had a problem with the uh, mag not locking or the uh, slide not locking back on the last on the empty mag. So I'm gonna give it a shot. See how it goes. First impression of the Springfield Hellcat, very nice size for a uh, subcompact, very similar in feel to the 365. Uh, I like the beeper tail, get a nice high grip on it. Other than that, you know, we're going to give it a few more mags, see how it goes. So this time around, I did watch my uh, thumb placement. Uh, that that had been the issue for it to lock, not lock back the first time. Um, second com- second time around, you know, I'm kind of getting used to the recoil, and it's it's really not that bad. Um, I really do enjoy those sights. That front sight just catches, and the U-notch just makes it a lot easier for uh, target placement. So what innovations were you? looking for because just handling it right now it looks like you can actually do a ambi uh, mag release which some that glock ended up doing a while back um looks like their takedown this looks like pin wise it's pretty much like almost a almost a glock 43 42 <laughs> oh, no. i think you probably <laughs> answered it right there so it was a, it's, it's not necessarily that the gun didn't uh deliver Mm-hmm. What it was was I didn't know what to expect because of all the hype and the marketing that went out on it. Right. So I'm expecting something that was completely new, but like you said, it's something that was already there. So you throw an extra round in there, it 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 just wasn't. Yeah, you know, I was expecting fireworks, and I got. Well, you know, I, I got myself hyped puzzle. up because it, it's a Springfield that that doesn't have the grip safety on it. It's polymer frame. Mm-hmm. I mean, the XDSs were cool, but that that. Extra grip safety on the grip. It's you know what? I actually, um, I mean, whenever I'm selling pistols to newer shooters, like one thing I actually, actually, actually I can't talk right now, actually <laughs> like is actually the um, Easy 380, the MP. Yeah, the Easy, yeah. easy Rack. So I like that because it actually promotes having a nice, high, strong grip, a firm grip. I gotcha. So having back or grip safeties yeah. do promote that because guess what? The gun's not going to go bang unless you hold the gun right. Right. 
I do agree. The the grip on that Hellcat, I think, is a better grip angle for me personally than the mm -hmm. P three sixty five. It does let me get a little higher on. It the does back. have a deeper beaver yeah. tail. Yeah. Always been my beef with the three sixty five. It just doesn't fit my hand yeah. right because of the yeah, grip it's, angle. It's gonna mm -hmm. jump out of your hand. Yeah. You know, and s specifically because they do market it for a carry gun. Right. I see a lot of first time buyers want to jump into the P three sixty five or the Hellcat. And it's not an easy gun to jump into when mm -hmm. you haven't shot before yeah. or you haven't done a lot of shooting or you're accustomed to a, a mid-size or a full-size gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I experienced that. I hadn't shot a, a small gun in a while, and that thing was just jumping. You What's know? the price point on the Hellcat versus the 365? Well, the MSRP on them is like 599 So roughly around the same? Yeah. Your store price is usually right around four ninety nine, so it's the same yeah. as a three sixty five. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a what feels more comfortable to you, kind of. Yeah, it comes right. down, you know. Between I said that. that on review too. It just comes down to it, choice. It's right. opinion. You know? I liked it more than he did, and mm -hmm. it's it's just opinion. So for the full review, of course, we've got it up at uh, yeah. justapewreviews dot com. Yep. www dot justapewreviews dot com to see that full feel full review. And cool. with that. The uh, the short-winded Johnny Phoenix is going to go with the Minuteman segment. <laughs> yeah, I got some flack for going a little bit too long last time, so I'm going to try to do this real quick and right on time. I practice a little bit, but it won't be perfect. Uh, the Minuteman, of course, is the segment of the show when we cover some 2A issues or 2A um, topics. Today, what I want to do is cover three items, and they all kind of interweave each other with... Uh, the report that the FBI releases every year is the FBI Uniform Crime Report. And the first thing I want to do is just give you an overview of something that gun grabbers always jump on us about. The belief that the more guns that there are in the wild or in the hands of the public, that the higher the crime rate will be. So I'm going to take a look at a quarter century's worth of stats and just throw them at you real quick. So the crime rate from 1993 to 2018 in 1993, we had 747.1 violent crimes per 100,000 citizens. In 2018, we have dropped that number to 300, oh, excuse me, uh, where is that? Oh, there it is, 369 per, 369 violent crimes per 100,000 citizens. That's a 50.6% drop in violent crimes. And we run over to gun ownership. From 1995, we had 249 million guns that were in the hands of citizens privately owned. In 2019, that number's jumped to 400 million guns. Now, of course, since we don't register our guns here in the United States of America, unless you live in a communist state like California, mm -hmm. <clears throat> those are estimates. And that's a 60% rise in gun ownership and a 50.6% drop in violent crimes per 100,000 citizens. So you do your own math and you come up with your own conclusions. But to me, it doesn't support that crime rates right, uh, go up along with gun ownership. It just, the numbers don't match. Mm -hmm. uh, the second point I want to take, uh, that I want to go to is the, when, when people talk about gun control, you know, I don't, if I thought gun control worked, I'd be all for it. If you can convince me that if you take guns away from private citizens that are law-abiding, that aren't criminals, and you can drop the crime rate, I'd be totally for it. I still own a gun, mm -hmm. but I would be to I could understand why that would be. So let's take a look at some numbers that we got from the Uniform Crime Report, from the FBI. So I'm not pulling these numbers off of gun magazines. I'm pulling them directly from the FBI. Okay? We're going to go over some cities, and we're going to take a look at their violent crime rates. We'll start out with Baltimore, 1,833 violent crimes per 100,000 citizens. That's 2018. All of these numbers are. <clears throat> Trenton, New Jersey, 1,161 violent crimes per 100,000 citizens. Los Angeles, 748 crimes. Uh, there are violent crimes per 100,000 uh, citizens. Seattle, 680. Boston, 622. New York City, 614. Now, if you listen to the, the uh, names of the cities I've mentioned, Baltimore, Trenton, New Jersey, Los Angeles, Seattle, New York City, Boston, every single one of those cities has a ridiculous amount of gun control laws in place. And you can look them up for yourself, and you'll know what they are. So let's compare that to Phoenix, Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Phoenix, Arizona, we're allowed to constitutionally carry. We do have CCWs, but they're not required. There is no 
gun show loophole, blah, 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 blah. There's NFAs that are allowed. You can have a short barrel rifle. You can have a short barrel shotgun. You can have an, any other weapon. You can have whatever. You can have a machine gun so long as you do whatever the federal law says you have to do. So what would you think our average crime, how many violent crimes per 100,000 do you think we would have? If what the left is telling us is true, then, then Phoenix, which is basically the wild, wild west compared to Seattle, L.A., or New York City, or Trenton, or Baltimore, we should have the highest amount of violent crimes per 100,000 citizens, which, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. that, that would be the case, but it's not. We have 508. And yeah. let's remember, Phoenix is a neighboring, st uh, our, our neighbors are Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. We're border state. We have a lot of things that happen to go back and forth. We should be super violent, <laughs> but we're not. So you can, again, you can make your own conclusions based on what I just said, but that's what I have to say about that. And lastly, the biggest number that's been thrown around by the left, by, by mainstream media, by the, Demo the Democrats, the liberals, and the progressives, and I'm not mad at anybody for that, I'm just saying, that's what they're saying, that's the truth, right? Is the 36,000 deaths that are related to guns that happen every year. Now, it's a little closer to 40 in 2018, but 36,000 is the number they throw out. 36,000 deaths every year, that's 100 a day, blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at what the other death causes are in the United States of America. The number one death, uh, cause of death in the United States is heart disease. There's 597,689 people that die of heart disease. Cancer causes 574,743 deaths. Medical errors, you go in for a vasectomy and they give you a lobotomy, oops, sorry. <laughs> we meant to cut here and we cut there. Hey, you know what? That costs you 440,000 deaths a year. 440,000, not 36, 440. You got chronic lower respiratory disease, 138,000 deaths a year. Stroke, 129,000. Accidents of all kinds included, 120,000. Alzheimer's, 83,000. Diabetes, 80,000. The flu, 51,000 deaths a year. The flu kills more than all deaths combined with guns. And I'm giving them everything. I'm giving them suicides. I'm giving them criminal on criminal shootings. I'm giving police killing people, justifiable self-defense. I'm giving them all the deaths they want. And the flu kills more people than guns. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Kidney disease, 50,000. Suicide of all types, 44,000. Now, I'm not making fun of suicides. I do think there's a problem with suicides. But I think the suicide problems tie directly on to what kind of drugs people are taking. You want it's to take cultural. The yeah. I think it's cultural. Absolutely. But. It's certainly uh, bacterial infections and cirrhosis of the liver come in at 38,000. We still haven't reached guns yet. Mm -hmm. But constantly, we're, we're just being drilled with the fact that there's no epidemic of gun problems. There's no epidemic of gun deaths. You can't have an epidemic when there's 12 other causes ahead of it. And the number one leading death cause is heart disease, has s almost 600,000 deaths a year. You've got people getting killed of all kinds of, of incidences combined, including suicides, accidents, criminals shooting each other, cops shooting criminals, people shooting each other by mistake, accidents, you know, all of it comes down to 36,000. Mm -hmm. So that's my rant for the 2A. Come on, people. The politicians aren't stupid. I hear every day people say, man, those politicians don't know what they're talking about. They're dumb. Look at these numbers. How could they not see? Fellas, ladies, gentlemen, politicians aren't stupid. They're smart. They know what their numbers are. They see the same numbers I just read off to you from the crime rate to the, uh, the, the cities that suffer from gun crimes to the, 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 the rate of deaths. They all know that. They're not stupid. They're counting on us being stupid. Mm -hmm. They're counting mm -hmm. on us sitting on our butts and not, not calling them out for this. Every time a politician pushes a gun law, it becomes law because people like us sit back and we don't know what to say. They say 36,000 deaths. 36,000 is a big number. We all get freaked out. We don't know what to say. Well, most of us don't know what to say. The point of the Minuteman segment is to, tell you, to give you some idea of what to say back. 
When they tell you 36,000 deaths are an epidemic in this country, you look right back at your politician. Don't look back at the person in the grocery store that doesn't know diddly about the gun laws or about gun statistics. Look at your politician, look at your representative, look at your senator, look at your congressman, and you call them up and you fax them, you email them, and every time they say something as stupid as there's an epidemic of gun deaths in this country, you jam this list right up their noses and you say, we're not stupid and we're not voting for you. And that's how you keep the 2A uh, protecting this country. It's not about yelling and screaming and, and making fun of trolls on the internet. It's about going to your politicians, the people that run your county, your city, your municipality, your country, your state. You got to tell them, we're not stupid and we're not buying your dumb stories. We're not buying your numbers. Mm -hmm. That's my 2A rant. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Okay. Good. Well, thank you for that, Johnny. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> Up next is the, uh, the blue collar baller for this week. Since 2005, the Taurus Millennium Series has been a widely popular subcompact gun, but none of the models have had the hype as the all-new Taurus G3. You guys had a chance to uh, take one of these out this week, and yes, we uh, did. what do you think? Go ahead, Joe. You start it off. With me, um, I like the Taurus G3. For the price, you can't beat it. It's two fifty nine, right out of the right out of the case. Um, comes with a uh, 15 round flush fit mag. Uh, 17. Fucking rookie. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I, I thought I had it turned off. Fucking silent. Here, let's restart that. No, just keep going. You no, sure? Keep going. Or is I at Chris? We're, we're talking with adults here, man. They, they, I'm sure they're a couple f bombs. You literally said. <laughs> Dude, I totally thought I had it off. Oh, I forgot I left it off. Go ahead. Where'd you get me at? You want to start over or what? No, just roll, buddy. Roll. Where was I at? Huh? I don't know. You're talking about the price point. It's, it's not the price point. Oh, okay. It's not network news. We're a podcast. Yeah. So, 259 on that gun right out of the box. Um, you really can't beat it for that price. 15 round flush fit mag with a 17 round uh, extended mag that also comes with it. Um, I like shooting it. It shot great for the price. You really can't beat it. It's. You should really start that off, dude. It's Sorry. Not, okay. All right, I'll just roll with it. Yeah, the G3, the Taurus G3, the uh, most anticipated blue-collar baller gun of the year. Uh, you, you guys know how I feel about quality guns that are low price or, or entry-level price. Uh, for a mid-size, it's almost a full-size gun, the Taurus G3 is a great value. And that's what I look for when I look for the blue-collar uh, baller type of guns. Their guns are going to introduce people into the gun market, the, uh, to the shooting experience, to the sport. I could see somebody starting out with a G3 mm -hmm. and getting into competition. I'll tell you why. Because unlike its little brother, the, two, uh, the right. G2C, mm -hmm. which has a very long trigger, a lot of travel on that trigger, and then you get the wall, then it breaks, and then you get a great reset. The G3, on the other hand, one of the best triggers I've felt on a cheap gun. Or not cheap, but inexpensive. inexpensive. Have you tried it? No, I'm about to. Try it right now and tell me. Joe's not a big fan. I'm not a big fan, but if 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 there's a gun that you need to leave in your you leave in your car, or you're not scared that someone's gonna take it and your your 500 Glock your 500 dollar Glock is is gone and that really hurts the pockets. But for a gun two two hundred fifty nine bucks that you can just leave in your car, I think it's a great gun for that. It's still a bit long, but you gotta also keep in mind that I haven't. Press the stop right. trigger and the miss, oh, miss Overwatch trigger um, over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is so long. Um, but is that a what's that a four inch, four and a quarter inch barrel? That's four inch barrel. Four yeah. inch barrel. Um, I can see a newer shooter picking that up um, and running with it. I actually shot recently, just shot the G two C with some actually really good ammo with some Federal Syntex some one twenty fours, and actually able to put down a pretty solid group on it. Like. Don't get me wrong, the, the trigger definitely does need some work on it, right. but um, I was actually pretty well, surprised tell you what, by I'll it. I'll tell you, if you take that G3 out mm -hmm. and you run that, I guarantee you, you, you will love it. Well, you'll love it as much as you love a stock gun that's right. $250. <laughs> but, but I mean, for the value, you know, that's the thing. Taurus has taken a lot of beating it, and they deserved it for some mm -hmm. of the products they had previous to, let's say, 2010-ish, yeah. right? 
um, they had some quality control issues. That was part of their old business model, you know, just mm -hmm. put out a lot of guns and we'll deal with it when they come back. Right. I think they've gotten a lot better at making sure that they get guns out that are there. Th the thing is with the G3, they're not, they're not doing, see, that's the difference. They're not doing anything new with that gun. Mm -hmm. It's a, poly, a striker a polymer striker fire gun. Polymer yeah. But what they did was they made a $250 Glock in my mind. To me, that's a G19 for 250 bucks. Mm -hmm. And you're not gonna get a much better deal and functionality out of a gun for $250. You can't beat it, I don't think, like Joe said. So that's the All reason right. it's my blue the collar blue baller. baller. Blue co yep. All right, well, let's check out the video on that. Yep. Welcome back to JustPReviews.com. This is Johnny Phoenix and Joe. Today we'll be trying out the all new Taurus G3 full size polymer frame. Uh, this is a striker fire. The mag capacity on this is uh, 17 rounds with the extended mag. The flush fit mag will be a 15 round magazine. Um, they do have front serrations in the front and it has your traditional three dot sights. Uh, it's got a manual safety and also a trigger safety. Also has these grip panels on the side with the rough texture. Um, let's see how this baby shoots. And we're back from shooting the uh, Taurus G3. Uh, my first impressions are it's a very, very comfortable gun to shoot. Uh, it is a G19 uh, Smith & Wesson 4-inch uh, slide uh, 2.0 size-ish, if you know what I mean. It feels really good in the hand. It shoots like a full-size gun, but its actual size is a little bit smaller than that. Uh, there's no muzzle flip on it. Very good texturing on the grips. Very nice sights on the gun I liked it a lot and it is a lot like its little brother the T uh, the G2C however the trigger is way better incredibly short uh, incredibly short reset on it. well that's pretty interesting um, that's about all we have for <laughs> <laughs> well, well that's pretty yeah. interesting <laughs> I think you can leave that in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. Uh, wow, well, that nice of you. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You guys fired that turn. Well, it looks like you guys uh, you enjoyed that one. We did. It was a good gun. Preview for the upcoming uh, episode three. Our spotlight guest is going to be POF USA CEO, Mr. Patriot himself, Frank Tasoma. Right on. Our spotlight review is going to be the POF Revolution CMR pistol. You guys mm -hmm. should probably have a good time with that one for oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about that can one. Can we have some of your ammo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Just a I portion. Can, here we have some. 308. As long as I can shoot it. And uh, the blue collar baller, the Minuteman, and more. So for our guest, Ursula Williams, we are very happy to have you. Thank you for coming. Thank in. you again. Thank you. Thank for having you, me. Ursula. It was we had awesome. Great time with you. Yeah. Appreciate it. So, for Joe, Johnny, and myself, we are signing off. Thank you for checking in. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs>